Today we're talking about autopsies. Usually seen multiple times in every episode of a crime show with the studious medical examiner who, after peering at the body for about five minutes, earnestly states their conclusion in a some well thought out but creative way to a bunch of detectives that have just randomly walked in at the right time. Shockingly enough, real life ain't that simple. So let's answer common autopsy questions. In this video, we're going to be talking about coroner autopsies, as opposed to hospital autopsies, which, with the family's consent, can be used to help clarify the reasons why a person died and offer information to the medical profession about the deceased person's condition. So, it's an autopsy that helps the medical field gain knowledge or lets the family know of any genetic issues. Those are a whole different beast, and we could always do another video on that later. In the meantime, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. It really helps the video be seen by the YouTube algorithm and so more people can view it. But now, let's talk about those coroner autopsies, shall we? What is an autopsy? An autopsy, or post-mortem, is a medical examination of a body after death. Contrary to popular belief, they're not always a open up, take everything out, labour over every small detail kind of thing. There are three levels of autopsy. The complete level, which is the one that commonly comes to mind, where all the body cavities, including the head, is examined. A limited autopsy, which may exclude the head. And a selective autopsy, where specific organs are only examined. Autopsies will usually also include testing for any sort of infection, changes in the body tissue or organs, and testing for chemicals like medication, illicit drugs and poisons. When is an autopsy needed? Under the New South Wales Coroner's Act of 2009, a medical practitioner must not issue a certificate as to the cause of death if the death is a reportable death. Now I'll link in the description below a complete definition of this, but in a nutshell, a reportable death is defined as where a person has died of violent or unnatural death, a sudden death of which the cause is unknown, under suspicious or unusual circumstances. In circumstances where the person's death was not reasonably expected outcome of a health-related procedure, while in a mental health facility, residential care facility, childcare, correction center, lockup or detention center, or while attempting to escape from police custody. So if it in any way looks suspicious, the body is off to the coroner's office. What happens during an autopsy? How an autopsy is performed is not some unconceivable concept. It's performed like a surgical operation. If a complete autopsy is required, then these steps are usually part of it. An autopsy is performed as soon as possible. It is performed by a specially qualified doctor called a pathologist and assisted by a technician. So not some random creepy bloke. Thanks movies. The room in which the autopsy is performed is very similar to a hospital operating theater. The body is carefully laid out on the examination table and unlike TV, there's no modesty cloth. The pathologist first looks at the body, noting its appearance and taking a lot of notes. Photographs and x-rays may be taken the pathologist makes a cut on the body from the collarbone down to the lower abdomen to examine the chest and organs. The white incision, as it's known. Tiny tissue samples are taken from each organ for examination under a microscope and may also be sent for chemical analysis or microbiological culture. In most cases, the brain is examined. This requires cutting through the scalp and skull. The brain is a very fragile organ and to examine it carefully and properly, it may take up to three weeks not the five minutes you see on TV. If that were possible, we would know a lot more about the brain than we do. Some organs may need to be kept for up to six weeks so that further tests can be performed by the pathology department. After an autopsy, the organs are replaced and the skin is stitched closed, again, just like a normal operation. And no, they don't hook up all the organs back together. If you're taking out an old sink, you don't reconnect the plumbing just to send it to the tip. Can you object to a coroner's autopsy? Next of kin can object to a post-mortem by writing to the coroner explaining their reasons for the objection. This is particularly common for certain religious groups who feel the soul would not reach the afterlife if the body is desecrated. Unless the coroner believes the post-mortem examination must be performed immediately, it must be delayed 48 hours to allow the next of kin time to apply to the Supreme Court for an order of stay of the examination. Depending on the outcome, the court may make an order of no examination or partial examination be performed. However, the coroner decides whether a post-mortem is necessary and is in the public interest. If you are in any way suspected of causing Uncle Fred's death, 
and you ask for an autopsy not to be performed, then it will most certainly be turned down. How long does an autopsy take? Unless there are objections to the autopsy, the autopsy is done without any unnecessary delay. While the actual autopsy itself takes about three hours, the report writing and any additional specialist tests may take up to 10 weeks or in exceptional cases, even longer. In my personal experience, the three week mark seems relatively common. Do detectives just walk into the autopsy suite? While it makes for great TV, no. While investigating officers and even prosecuting attorneys may attend a particular autopsy for one reason or another, they're not simply waltzing in and out of the suite as they please. All staff and visitors entering the mortuary and autopsy rooms require appropriate protective clothing, disposable aprons, surgical suits, gloves or visors. There's no just wandering in and out in your everyday suit and demanding answers. Can I watch an autopsy? Unless it is necessary for legal or training purposes, no. The general public cannot attend an autopsy. While you may find the whole thing fascinating, remember that's someone's loved one and they're not here for your entertainment. Neither is the coroner for that matter. Most pathologists are deeply aware of how much they are trusted by families in handling their deceased loved ones with care and dignity. They take great pride in being able to provide that peace and you oogling at them is not part of that. I hope this answers some of your autopsy questions. Give us a like if it has. Let us know in the comments if you have any more questions. And in the description, you'll find a number of links for more information, including a virtual autopsy presented by the Australian National Museum. So go take a look. Now go talk death.